Did you know that the way you think about Allah actually affects how Allah is with you? How you ask? Let me tell you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your brother Abu Abdul Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarramah. And yes, it's true. The way you think about Allah actually affects how Allah is with you. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Allah, may he be exalted, says, I am as my slave thinks I am. And I am with him when he remembers me. If he comes to me walking, I go to him running. This hadith Qudsi is narrated by both Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Now think about that for a moment. Allah runs to us when we merely walk towards him. This profound fact shows Allah's mercy, generosity, and unwavering love for us. And the first part of the hadith, I am as my slave thinks I am, also reminds us of the responsibility we bear in our relationship with Allah. In today's fast paced world, we often face challenges that really test our Iman, financial issues, health concerns, family disputes. Often we think the worst. We don't really visualize and truly believe that Allah will solve our problems and give us what we need. Yet in this beautiful hadith, the Prophet وسلم, is quoting Allah as saying that he is the way we, his slaves, he is the way we see him and think about him. And even if we do hope and think positively of Allah during these times, believing he will answer our supplications, it's also essential to ensure that our actions align with that belief and hope. Let me tell you a story about a sick man who the Prophet ﷺ visited. Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma said that once the Prophet ﷺ went to visit a Bedouin Arab. Now, whenever the Prophet ﷺ would visit a sick man, he would usually say, La ba'sa, tahurun inshallah, which basically means, don't worry, this sickness is a purification inshallah, meaning it's a purification for your sins or an expiation. So on this occasion too, the Prophet ﷺ, he said these same words. However, the man replied, not at all. It is on the contrary, a fever which is boiling in an old man and will cause him to visit the graves. The Prophet ﷺ replied, very well then. And this hadith is reported by Bukhari. Here we see a man who, when given hope by the Prophet ﷺ, he ignored these divine glad tidings and insisted instead on seeing the negative side of things. He had a very negative view of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ simply said, very well then. As if to say, if that's what you're going to think about Allah, then so be it. Another point to bear in mind is what our scholars, may Allah have mercy on them, may Allah preserve them, have said. Thinking positively of Allah must be accompanied by avoiding sin. This means that you'll have a much greater chance of getting Allah's mercy when you're not continuously committing sins or neglecting obligatory duties. We don't want to be like someone who is hoping to quench their thirst by drinking from an empty glass. But how do we ensure we can think positively about Allah and act in a way to maximize the benefit of thinking positively about Him? Well, here are some practical steps. Number one, regular self-accountability. Every night, reflect on your day. Did you fulfill your obligatory duties? Did you avoid major sins? Were you sincere in your intentions? Number two, surround yourself with righteousness. Being in a community or having friends who remind you of Allah's commands and who also think positively about Allah, positive people can be a protective barrier against straying and also can help you also be positive and think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, seek knowledge. The more you know about Allah and his deen, the more equipped you are to think positively of Allah in the correct manner. And what does this mean? The more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you begin to realize how merciful he is. And actually, if you look at your own life, and you reflect on everything that has happened to you from the time that you were born until now, you will find occasion after occasion after occasion where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped you out, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you, has got you out of the problem that you were in, even though you did not deserve it. Now it's worth mentioning that thinking positively of Allah, especially during hardships and when death approaches, is commendable. The Prophet sallallahu emphasized this by saying, none of you should die except thinking positively of Allah, narrated by Muslim. This tells us that even in our final moments, we should remain hopeful of Allah's mercy and kindness. And isn't that the beauty of our Iman? That no matter how rocky our journey has been, there's always hope in Allah's boundless mercy. My dear brothers and sisters, let's make it our mission 
to not only think positively of Allah, but to ensure our actions reflect that positive thinking. Ask yourself, do my daily actions align with my hopes and my expectations of Allah's mercy? Before we part, I want to ask you, have you ever had a moment where you kept faith and had positive thoughts about Allah and then things just fell into place? I'd love to hear your story in the comments. I'm super excited and curious to read about your experiences. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, grant us the ability to think positively of you in the correct manner and help us align our actions with our hopes in your mercy. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from Mecca. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.